Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at conditionals or conditional statements, writing conditional statements in Bash scripts or to be more technical, control structures. So, so far, we've been able to write our Bash script to create a Bash, a, a script or a file that we give it, giving a file name in the, in, in the terminal. But the question is, what if we decide that okay i run create so dot forward slash create then greetings so first let's check if i check here i have uh some files here so let's do hello <coughs> sorry let's do hello dot txt or let's cut it and see something cut hello dot txt you said that there is already something here right so what if i decide that okay let me echo something into it this is just to give you context the reason why we would have to do control structures or put some control on the code right so um hello said them or let's say hello said them how are you doing today so assuming this is a code or a chunk of code that we we write into the hello.txt right and then so now if i cut the hello.txt i should see sorry hmm. uh it's supposed to go to hello and i did hell so now if I cut hello.txt, I should see these two lines here, right? Okay. But what if I decide to run this program dot forward slash create, right? And then the name I give it is hello.txt. And then the name I give it, right, is hello.txt. It means that it's going to run all of these things and then create this file, right? So let's see if I hit enter. It tells me creating hello.txt, making executable, declaring shebang into it, right? But then if I do cut hello.txt, right, we see that now it has overwritten the, uh, the echo that we just did, right? So which means that this is very risky, right? So we have to put some control on this script to make sure that first it has to check whether there's already a file here called hello.txt and then whether it has some contents already right so if it has some contents then it should tell us that no some file already exists and it's not empty for that matter we can't write to that file or we can't create that file and make it executable do you see so basically that's the context right so but before we can include the control structure or the conditional statement or that conditional statement here we'd first have to look at certain things right so let's quickly do that so now i'm going to touch a new file right no he said we'll no longer do that but then for the sake assuming you are watching this video without watching the previous ones i would advise you go watch the previous ones before coming here because the project we are building is progressive right so go watch the previous video but because of the sake of maybe the new people i wouldn't use a create script but then i can do touch and then the name of the file so i want to do control so control so let me do ct rl dot sh and then i make it executable by shmodding it shmod then give it the permissions i want 755 and then the file name. So by the time it comes here, the control would have been created. So we cannot change the permission on it. So if I hit enter and I do ls, I can see my control here. So I can now open it up for editing. Okay. 
So now we are here, right? So the next thing we do, we declare our shebang, right? So forward slash bin, forward slash bash, and then we now type our chunk of code. To do these control structures or to look at the uh, declaration of if statements or the things we use, the statements we use are if statements. So we, we search some conditionals and then make sure that they are met, right? But before then, we'd have to look at some conditionals or comparison operators, right? So comparison operators in bash. So we have for numbers, you can use this EQ to represent equal to, right? Equality, so that a number is equal to another number, right? So this is for equal to, and then we have dash NQ for not equal to NE, sorry, NE for not equal to and then we have dash l e so let's do l t first for less than <clears throat> less than something and then we have dash g t for greater than And then we have dash um, LE for less than or equal to. So less or equal to. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Less or equal to. Then we have GE for greater or equal to. Equal to. All right. So. Basically, these are some of the logical, the con comparison operators for numbers, right? And then if we come to numbers, right, or integers, and then if you come to strings, right, we could use, we could use the less than, greater than, so let me put them here, greater than, equal to, sorry equal to and then um um let me see less than or equal to pay attention to how it looks greater than or equal to but this time you do equal to or greater than right so keep that in mind but then sometimes we know that in the linux terminal we use less than to redirect stuff into redirect and output into a file so to do this we have to use the backslash to escape that command right so you keep that in mind we for the greater than and then the less than we use the backslash to escape them so always try and keep that in mind for string so this is comparison for string for strings or for f so this could be for strings or for variables like things that are not numbers okay so now for now that we've looked at the comparison let's look at the logical operators right so logical operators operators so for logical operators we do we have the and operator so this stands for and logical and we have the logical or so this is the logical or so basically this is it so if you want to do a command a certain statement and another statement you use the this command and then you want to do another statement or you do that or you could also just do dash a for end right so keep that in mind for that okay so we have these operators now let's look at operators on files right 
So operate test on file or some options on files. Operate test on files. So for file operations, we have dash E that checks for the existence of the file, the existence of file, uh, of file. And then we have option or dash W that checks for the writability. So whether a file is writable, so existence and whether the file is writable. So file exists, exists, sorry, exists and writable. And then dash R for the same thing, but this time around file exists and readable. So let me copy this, not this. So dash R for file exists and readable readable and then this one we have dash x for file assist and executable 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 and then we have dash s for file exists and not empty and not empty or contain something so not empty so basically empty okay so we have other options dash capital o to check the owner whether the owner of the file is the current user current user and then we have dash capital g for the group whether the group is a current group and then we have other things too as well so basically we have and then the very important one d right that checks whether the file is a directory so file is a directory directory so yeah so we have these file options right operators that we can use to check for files so we pass these options and then the file name right so the syntax is pretty like this so syntax, syntax is you pass the option, let's say X or E, and then the file name, right? So you pass the file name and then you are good to go. And then this returns a Boolean, either true or false, that you would use in your if statement. So we look at some of the comparison operators for numbers. Or for values or integers, then we also look at some for strings. So you can use this ones too. Sometimes, if you're lucky, they may work for numbers as well. But I would advise you use this ones here for numbers. And we have the logical operators, the end or. So these ones are mostly used to combine two or more statements, right? That are comparison statements or conditional statements so either this is true and this is true then it is true if one is false and you're using the end operator it becomes false but if you're using the all operator then it just needs one to be true for the whole statement to be true so basically that's what we have for the conditional so now let's look at how to write the if statement so one more thing if you want to do a multi-line comment in bash you do colon right then space then quotation single quotes then you come to the bottom and then you end that quote so now everything i've written here is now a comment right it's not a comment and would not worry us right i should have even do this so everything here is now a comment and when we run our code here this may not this will not be run right always remember your colon the single quotes and then you end the comments with another single quote okay so now let's look at how to implement the if statement so to write a simple if statement all you have to do is write if and then you put your 
square bracket, you put a certain condition here, right? Or comparison, then after putting the comparison or the condition inside the square bracket, then you bring the then. So if this condition is true, then do something. So then do a certain thing. So you put your command here. And then if you are sure that you are done with the command, then you do what? You end the if by turning the if upside down. That's five. So <clears throat> basically that's for if statements, a basic if statement. If a certain condition is true, it does this, right? So let's look at how to do that. So to do that, let me just declare some variables. So let's say var1 is equal to 2 and then var2 is equal to 4, right? So this is just basic. So you see how we implement it. So here, I want to compare var1 to dollar var1 is less than and you said less than we use l then less than t right and then you do what you put your var2 there var2 right so if var1 is less than var2 let's do a certain command echo what var1 is less than var2 so var1 is less than var2 simple like this okay so when i hit now we would have to run this file right so i said to run you would open your terminal you can click here to open a terminal window here new terminal there you have it here so to run this file, we said you do dot forward slash or the name of the file right that's ctr dot sh so when i hit this i'm told that sorry you see there hmm, bash is sensitive to spaces so when you leave a space it thinks of it as though it's a diff another command so let's clean up this and then resave the file and rerun right okay so now it tells us that two is less than four right so what if i make this 20 what then happens then it says this statement to be false because 20 is not less than four right so let's see if I rerun this, I don't get any output, which means that it checks whether 20 is less than 4 and then tells me that this. But then always pay attention that there should be a space between your square bracket and the first variable and there should be another space between the first variable and then the operator, the comparison operator. And there should be another space between that and the second variable. And there should be another space between that and the closing square bracket. Okay. <clears throat> but then what if we want to, you know, check? So this just checks whether the number is less than, right? But then what about the other way around? So what should it do if it is not less than? So to do that, we bring another statement called else, right? So else do something. So else then echo something for me. So let's say echo bar one is greater than than bar two, right? As easy as this. So then we rerun this file and then we get what? 20 is greater than four four which is very true so basically we check this condition if it is true we execute this command else if it is false then we execute this command always make sure you end your if statement with the if then upside down right or written in reverse <laughs> not upside down okay so now let's check something else what if i do greater than gt right so we said greater than is gt here and then so you see we see 20 is greater than what four okay what if i try to use the normal symbols let's see we also see that 20 is greater than four and but then look at something here you see that now it tries to create a file called four 
you see, which means that it is trying. And when we check the four, if I cut, let me clear the terminal here so you can see it properly. It creates a file called four here, right? Then if I cut that four, you see that there's nothing inside it, right? So because this is not an echo command or something. So in order to avoid this, first let me delete that for remove for. In order to avoid this, we said you want to escape it with the backslash, right? So I hit enter. Hopefully it should run. Okay, we got the same 20 is greater than 4. But then what happens here? Um if I do ls. We don't see the four here again, which means that it didn't try to redirect this. But let's check the logic. Is 20 truly greater than four? It said 20 is greater than four, right? So let's see, it said 20 is greater than four. Yes, this is 20. Obviously it is greater than four, right? But then the ideal thing here is that what? It should check var1. If var1 is greater than var2, then it should do this. Is that not it? And truly here, var1 is greater than what? var2. Isn't it? So why is it telling us that 20 is greater than this? Right? Let's look at this. Let me change this to gt, option gt. And you see something? Keep this in mind though. 20 is greater than 4. So let me just rerun it and see you see 20 is less than 4 this is what you said don't get confused i just okay let me just solve this bear in mind that we are using the greater than here right so i expect that it runs this command for me right because this is true obviously 20 is greater than 4 so let me change this here to greater than so it doesn't confuse you so greater than and let me change this to less than since we've changed the sign here to greater than, I'm saying that when you run this file, right, at this command, when this is true, then it should execute this command. Else, or if it is false, then it should execute this command, right? So let's look at this. If I run this script, it tells me that what? 20 is greater than 4. And that is true. 20 is greater than 4. Since we use this one here, this option here, okay. But then, if I do this one, right, that we try doing, when we do this, obviously we see that this is a greater than sign, right? So we expect that it echo what twenty is greater than four for us. But let's see if we should run this script. It tells us that twenty is less than four. So you see. It's telling that 20 is less than 4, which is obviously not true. Right. So it's safe you would use the option GT for numbers or for alphabets. Or, uh, sorry, the values, integers, comparison. Okay. But then what if we have another value? So let's say var3, where it's maybe var3 is the same as. Let's say 20, right? So, what if we want to compare bar 2 and bar 3, right? You know that else, so we have to say else if, right? So, if bar 1 is greater than bar 2, say bar 1 is greater than this. If bar, else if bar 1 is less than bar 2, say bar is less than this. But then what if we want to check whether var1 is equal to, do you see? So to do that, we include a third one. So, okay, let me just copy this one and comment it out. So, comments. So to do the comments, you can do control. You can highlight the thing and then do control forward slash on your keyboard to comment. Okay. So, I'll paste it here and then really. Okay. So now to include that one, then we add the else if. 
to elif, right? So it follows like Python. If you are used to the Python, then you bring your condition. Right? I said there should be a space between the two square brackets. Elif variable one. So let's say var one is equal to um variable one is less than so let's do less than var two okay then it should echo this command so then it should echo this command for us so then should echo a certain command here should echo a certain command here so we check if the variable one is less than this then it should execute this command else it should do something else so it should echo it is equal to is equal to to variable two then you close the if statement here okay so let's run this command again let's run the scripts and then we are told 20 is greater than 4 obviously but if we make the variable 220 what then happens i don't even need this variable 3 here so let me comment it out then this one we expect that it tells us that 20 is equal to 20 hopefully yeah so 20 is equal to 20 but if we change the variable 1 to 2 then we expect that it tells us that 20 is less than 20. Okay, so basically this is what, how we use the conditionals or the control structures in our code. This video is already long, so I'll stop here and then continue the next one where we look at how to implement this control structure in our create scripts. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends so that they can also learn from this video. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you.